When I was first pastoring in the early years, I realized there was a big problem and that people were changing, but they were not changing very deeply and that we were recycling the same old problems. It didn't matter how long a person was a Christian chronologically, it could have been 10, 15, 20 years, they still seemed to be uh, spiritual babies and doing conflicts and stress as if they were still 12 years old. And I said, something's wrong here because I'm applying all the what I know in classic discipleship like Bible study and fellowship and small groups uh, and worship and attendance at church, but people just were not changing, especially under stress and in conflicts. And so I realized we have a big problem. You know, I would say there's two primary uh, aspects of that. First is unawareness, just emotionally being unaware of what's going on inside of oneself. I know for myself, I was a Christian 17 years, uh, but I, I didn't do feelings, I didn't do grief and loss, I had no idea how my past impacted my present. Uh, I was just do, quoting Bible, you know, building the church. Uh, I was very emotionally unaware. Uh, and then secondly, uh, I was too busy. I mean, the second quality of emotionally unhealthy person is does not have enough time to be with Jesus to sustain one's doing for Jesus in the world. In other words, being s busy, so I don't have time to abide uh, and continue and remain in Jesus, John 15, out of which all of life flows. And so uh, emotionally healthy spirituality is about a slowed down spirituality with Jesus at its very essence, about being with Jesus out of which all of life flows. This edition of emotional healthy spirituality is different than the previous because it's a companion now uh, to the course that we call the emotionally healthy spirituality course. Uh, what happened was, uh, we, this book was written to transform people's lives and discipleship in a church. And so we eventually developed a workbook, what's called a day-by-day, -day, a daily office book, and a DVD. So it's a centralized course done in churches. And so what we did was we basically tightened the first three chapters into one, so it all corresponds into an eight-week course. Uh, and so really it's very similar, but it's got some differences in terms of a bit updated, but most importantly, that it goes with the course that we call the Emotionally Healthy Spirituality course uh, today. I would say that emotional healthy spirituality is about an application of the Bible into your life. I think what we're doing is, this is biblical discipleship, but it's driven into your life very specifically. So for example, uh, it's looking at how maybe your family of origin and the culture has influenced the way you live your life, and then emotional healthy spirituality is gonna look at, yeah, but in the new family of Jesus, we don't do life that way, we do it differently. So it's gonna in specifically apply scripture into your life very directly, in a way that moves you to actually do something different. So it's not just knowing the Bible. Emotionally, the spirituality is about actually doing it and changing your life you know, by the Holy Spirit. You know, from the very beginning of Christian history, knowing yourself and knowing God were inseparable. We see this in, in Augustine, who wrote, how can I know God if I don't even know myself? John Calvin wrote, knowing God and knowing oneself is inseparable. And so uh, in the scriptures, we see people like David, who's fully aware of what's going on inside of him in the Psalms. He's very emotionally alive, uh, and he knows God. He knows himself, he knows God, and so thus he charges Goliath. So, so he's a tremendous example of, of, of someone who knows himself and knows God. Of course, we see it in Jesus, who's fully aware of who he is as a, as a God-man. At the same time, of course, he knows the Father. It's, that, it's the combination that has great power. So when people say, I wanna know God, that's great, but to know God, you also have to know yourself because it's that, it's that combination that brings its unique power. Going back to go forward, one of the central themes of emotionally healthy spirituality, and, and it basically it's built on this, that we all come from families that go back three to four generations. The Bible talks about that. Uh, that means that we were impacted by what's happened to us in the late 1800s. Uh, but when we come to Christ, we're born again into the new family of Jesus. And Jesus said, unless you hate your father, mother, brother, sister, you cannot be my disciple. And Jesus said, he who loves father, mother more than me is not worthy of me. So when we come to Jesus, we basically are called to a new family that transcends culture, race, nationality, and bloodlines. And the blood that determines who we are is the blood of Jesus. And so uh, going back to go forward is saying, what are things from my past that are hindering me from going forward into the call that God has for me? God's got a purpose and a mission for every, every one of you. Uh, but in order to fulfill that, you've got to look at what are some shackles and baggage that I'm carrying from the past that is holding me back. And uh, I think a great example in scripture of that is clearly Joseph uh, in Genesis uh, uh, 39 to 50, who's very aware of the pain and trauma of his past, but he, he grieves it, he sees it, but then by the time he gets to chapter 50, end of his life, 
he says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, and he was blessing and feeding nations. And so the basic thrust is that God's put you and your family, your culture, the moment in history you were born, uh, and even the hard things that may have happened to you, if we offer it to God, he takes it, it's a gift to be a blessing and a gift to the world. So going back to go forward is a very, I'd say one of the, one of the pillars of emotionally healthy spirituality. Grief and loss are foundational to growing into a mature uh, Christian. We have a whole book in the Bible called Lamentations. Two-thirds of the Psalms are griefs and loss. I mean, Jeremiah was known as a man of sorrows. In fact, so was Jesus. And so we can't, so, so the Bible's got a whole theology of loss and, and grief, but we don't do that in the West today. In, you know, in, in the 21st century, we, we do bigger, better, faster. You know, get over it. You know, we medicate ourselves with addictions and drugs and something to, to, to get busy, shopping, TV, something to medicate the pain. But uh, scripture is about reality. And if, if spirituality is anything, it's about being immersed in reality, not running from it. And so grief and loss, engaging it, there's a biblical process to move through it. That is, we feel it, much like David did in the Psalms, much like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, much like the whole book of Lamentations. We bring it to God, we wait on the Lord with it, and then we wait on God to bring the new out of the old. And so there's a process of grieving as we wait on the Lord for God to birth something beautiful out of it, but we miss the births if we don't go with God in the endings. For every new beginning, there has to be an ending. So grief and loss is, is, is critical to growing up and maturing in Christ. Yeah, so we, we took this concept, a rule of life is a concept that goes back to, to Christian history, back to the third and fourth century. And it comes from uh, men and women who were living in the desert in Syria and Palestine, uh, uh, in Egypt, and they were seeking God. And they gathered together around a rule of life. And that word rule means a trellis, like for grapes. The, the trellis is meant to help grapes grow bigger and wider and, and higher and thicker. In the same way, every one of us has a way that we follow Jesus. We have a trellis. We get up in the morning, we spend time with Jesus. Maybe we go to church, we're in a small group. That's our trellis to keep us anchored in Jesus. And in emotional spirituality, we take that unconscious doing to say, stay anchored in Jesus. We make it conscious and say, to really have a life where Jesus is the center in every area of the life. I'm talking about recreation, work, family, church, neighborhood, money, you name it. Emotionally healthy spirituality as a discipleship pr approach is different in one primary way. It gets deep beneath the surface to transform people's lives. We like to say emotionally healthy spirituality discipleship is a discipleship that deeply changes lives for the sake of the world. Not superficially, not just in behavior, but deeply. And so what we're doing is creating a context in these discipleship courses uh, to get you in a position to be with Jesus uh, with some silence, with some stillness, with some community, with scripture, so that God can meet you. But uh, we like to say, come at your own risk, because God, Jesus does want to change your life. He, just like the 12 disciples, he, he called them to himself to transform them to become something beautiful. Discipleship is what it means to be a Christian. It means to put ourselves in the hands of Jesus so he can reshape us and pull out of us the things that don't belong there and breathe into us the things that we need to be to become the men and women God's called us to be. And so this discipleship approach is, gonna, is very different. It's gonna expose you to, I like to call it, missing elements of Western discipleship, things like grief and loss, which is a whole big theme in the Bible, or go back to go forward, how your family of origins impacted you, things like genograms, uh, things like know yourself that you made a God, how emotions are integrated into our following of Christ. Uh, things called the daily office and Sabbath keeping. How do I slow down my life to actually be with Jesus out of which all of life flows? So it's very practical. Uh, it's not simply memorize a verse and go home. It is actually, here are some uh, structures and some ways with scripture and by the, by the grace of God to actually make some significant changes and launch you into a life where you're actually being deeply changed by Jesus for the sake of the world, to be a blessing to the world, because God has called us all to be a blessing and a gift to the world. So uh, the Emotionally Healthy Discipleship courses are, uh, have been developed over a 21-year period. And there's actually two courses to it. Uh, there's the Emotionally Healthy Spirituality course and what's called the Emotionally Healthy Relationships course. They're two eight-week centralized courses. They're done much like Alpha is done for evangelism in churches. These are centralized courses, not structured for small groups, because there's training to lead it. Uh, but these are, the, the first course, spirituality course, is about loving God. The second course is about learning to love people, and it breaks it down very practically. We've developed these courses over a 21-year period, uh, not just in our local church in Queens, New York City, but with churches all around North America and actually in churches all around the world.
So they've been uh, polished and re re revised multiple, multiple times over these 21 year period. Each course has what's called the daily office book, a day by day book. So the core of both courses is helping people be with Jesus. One of the greatest crises in the church today is people are not spending time with God in scripture and alone with him. Uh, and so the core of the courses is helping people get a rhythm in their lives of being with Jesus every day, actually twice a day, and integrating silence and stillness into their time in scripture, not simply you know, reading a little devotional and off, off to the races. The goal is this of uh, being with Jesus all through the day. It's actually quite core. And then you got all this great content and then skills that you'll learn about, relationships that'll be different. So it, it's, a, it's a big answer to a big problem of discipleship uh, going on in the world. In fact, studies have been done about, uh, we have a crisis in discipleship in the church today, uh, in North America. Multiple studies have been done on this from Reveal, from Barna, and that people in our churches are not being transformed. They're not experiencing deep change in Jesus. We've got large crowds and they're attending, they're learning some things, but there's not deep change in our lives in terms of discipleship. And so this is one answer uh, to the discipleship crisis. It's a big answer to a big problem. And what we have found is that as people engage this, God meets them. There is deep change. And actually the whole church is impacted. Uh, but it, it's, a, it's, a, it's not like other discipleship approaches in that it requires a lot. You're reading a book, you're doing daily offices, this day-by-day -day book, you're, 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 you're studying, you're practicing during the week, you're, you're in a discipleship course. In other words, to be a Christian is to be a disciple. It's not like you become a Christian, I accept Jesus, maybe I'll be a disciple. No, to be a Christian is to be a disciple. You're saved by grace, but I like what Bonhoeffer said uh, in the 1930s in, in, uh, in Germany before World War II, that Christianity without discipleship is a Christianity without Christ. And so what we're, we're really bringing to the church is that discipleship is what it means to be a Christian. It's the norm, and so it's calling the church to follow Jesus, not simply be spectators uh, in a crowd, but actually my life is Jesus, I'm following him, I'm asking him to transform me, uh, and I'm reorienting my whole life around following Jesus. That's a shift for most North American uh, Christians today. We have a saying in Emotionally Healthy Spirituality that says, Jesus may be in your heart, but grandpa's in your bones. And what that means is that uh, it's one thing to accept Jesus, it's another thing to actually let him transform your life. And that's what discipleship is all about. And so at Emotionally Healthy Spirituality, our goal is to take, to take the Jesus in your heart and to, and to open you up so that he can actually get into your bones and into all of your life. And that we would become, as, as the church and as God's people, radically different in the way that we function than the world around us. And the world would know that we're as disciples by the way that we love God, the way that we love each other. But that's going to require discipleship. And so I want to encourage you, you know, pick up Emotionally Healthy Discipleship courses and and. Uh, Dive into it, uh, and uh, you'll find not just will you meet God, more importantly, God's going to meet you, and it'll change your life, and everyone around you will be thankful. Thank you.